du is 2x times dx. If we rearrange this to put the 2x on the other side, we can simply see that we can just set um, substitute in du for that whole function, 2x times dx. And we have our u, so let's just get right into it. We're going to substitute in... Oh, I'm just going to rewrite it real fast. Uh, I don't like it that way. Let's just have the square root of 1 plus x squared times 2x dx. That way you out there can see how this is e they're equal. So du is also equal to this. So we move right into the square root of 1 plus x squared times du. And we also notice, we also know this as u. So let's erase that. Put u right in, in its place. And now we simply again have the same exact problem from last time without the constant multiple. Just noticing your you want you want to choose stuff, you want to look ahead, choose stuff that will enable you to have functions where you can have your du easily recognized and be able to plug it in for your dx. Like so we got lucky here with the one plus x squared derivative being equal to this whole other other mess we have going on in this problem. So we end up with just the square root of u du and simply solve that again, I guess, if you want. It's just u to the one-half du, and now you just power rule again. Two-thirds u to the three-halves, plus your constant, like always. And now we'll substitute in your u. Two-thirds. Two-thirds, one plus x squared to the three-halves plus c. And good job, you are completed with this third easy problem. Alright, so at the top here, we can see that um, our basic trigonometric uh, derivatives that we learned way back um, come into play here, saying that the, that the derivative of our trigonometric function of, of u, our variable u, is um, different are they are differentiable functions of x and with this we can um, we attained our our statement that the derivative um, in respect to x of sine of u is the cosine of u we all know that sine of the sine of x derivative that's cosine and so we get the derivative of the derivative with respect to x of sine of u is cosine u du dx. So what this means is it's just uh, setting up how we get to the fact that our integral of cosine u du is equal to sine of u plus c. Um, this, is, this is pretty obvious for everyone we've been doing this. Um, but, you know, it's just good to point this out. Um, if you need it more in depth, just leave some, leave some comments or something. Uh, so I'm just going to go over a couple of quick examples of using our trigonometric functions and substitution, which it helps a lot. I mean, we wouldn't have been able to do this um, last week on our test or anything like that because we just didn't know it. But now that you guys see this, it's going to be just quite amazing. So the first um, example we do is just right out of the book. It's a integral of cosine of 7x plus 5 dx. And with this function, we're going to simply do what we've been doing with our substitution. And we're going to take the 7x plus 5 and make that u. And now, you guys probably already figured this out, that du is 7 dx. So, and then now we need to solve for dx. So, divide by 7. We get dx is equal to 1 7 du. And hey, look, now we have something to plug in for dx. So, we just drop this down, and we're just going to go straight ahead and substitute. So, we get cosine of u, and change this to 1 7 du. And simply bring the 1 7 out front as we did before with the constant multiple rule.
and now we're just going to have to finish this problem up. Um, we just stated up here that cosine of u du integral at the very top, we stated at the beginning of this part uh, of this example that sine of u, or the cosine of u du integral of that is uh, sine of u plus. So we simply bring down a 1 7. Cosine of u is the sine of u. And now solve it 1 7, plug in our u. And which is 7x plus 5. And don't forget the plus c. And you don't want to write it like this on the right. This is unacceptable, but I seem to have ran out of mar marker board space, so I just put it there. And it actually emphasizes the plus constant, I think, if I show it like this to you guys. You should understand it. And from here, we can pretty much solve... So far, we can solve our basic um, standard functions that in the first three examples, we can solve basic trigonometric functions. Um, they're integrals, of course. And now we will move on to the hardest of the hard examples. All right, example number five. Um, quickly going to do one last example from the book before I start throwing out some pretty fun problems. Um, this one is basically it's a little bit more difficult than the last one, but, you know, we'll get through it. It's the same, you know, just trigonometry and uh, substitution with it. So we have, this is our example, cosine squared of 2x dx. And you might be looking at this like, oh my god, how am I going to do this? But there's a very nice, tricky way of doing this that you might not notice right off the bat. If we notice that... Um, this is just a side note. One of cos one over cosine of two x is equal to the secant of two x. We can do some serious damage to this uh, very unpleasing problem. So we can, I guess, also slide this over and write it over here. This is equal to integral of secant squared of two x dx. See if you guys can see it. Okay, good. Um, and then from there, we, we have it much more simple now. And we simply did what we did last problem. And bring it over here. That's u will be 2x. And du is 2dx. And again, solve for dx. dx is 1 half du. And then we write the problem. So you can square of u times one half du. That's simply plugging in u and what we know as dx to be, which is one half du. And look, we have our constant multiple rule buddy back. So let's move it back out to the front and do secant squared of u du. And now Simply, we can we know what the antiderivative of secant squared is, or at least you better know, because it puts the derivative of tangent, you know, secant squared. So, whoa, there we go. Secant squared is tangent. All right, so let's uh, just plug, plug, plug and chug here. This is uh, the tangent of u. And we're going to plus our c. And, uh... times one half, of course, keep our constant multiple there, and plug in what we know. So one half tangent, oh, well, look at that. We have u, let's plug in two x there. And keep your plus c, and we're good to go. Uh, we can go back and confirm this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that real fast. I'm just gonna now work backwards and confirm this, what we solved here, just to prove that we got it right. And this is a nice trick that you can do to make sure that you got everything right. So now if we take the derivative of this, it looks pretty messy, but it's simply just keep one half there, same thing as a constant multiplier for anything else, keep one half outside, and then we get the tangent. Derivative of tangent is of course secant squared of 2x. But then, what do we do? I don't know. Oh, look at that, chain rule. And of course we get you know we get rid of the constant because it's it's a constant derivative.